Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for September 16th, 2021. Well, yesterday we did catch that nice little relief rally in the market, but we still have some technical damage. We still set in kind of a pre precarious position for both the diamonds and IWM, while the QQQ and SPY held on to their bullish trends and this morning we have some data that could certainly change everything making this kind of an interesting morning um, of trading so how about we settle in buckle up let's get ready for the thursday edition of the morning market prep video Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a fantastic evening yesterday. Got a little bit of rest because this morning we have maybe a little bit of stress in the market that we're going to have to deal with. Let's take a look at these uh, chart technicals and see if we can gain some information here before we dive into some of the data that's coming our way. First off, if you take a look at the Dow, we don't have the best technical picture here. Um, in the chart, we have that downtrend. We have officially entered um, that downtrend by making a lower high and a lower low. And we remained, even after yesterday's bullishness, we remained below um, some technical resistance in the chart um, and our 50-day moving average. So we still have some challenges here in the chart. Notice that our short-term averages here are pushing down. Our 34 EMA is down here by the 50 day moving average. Our eight exponential is crossed over and our 20 day has moved down. We're creating a price resistance level, not only here in the price, but in the moving averages here. And so we'll wanna watch that. That's kind of a, um, a technically difficult area for the Dow. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite all time shorting uh, patterns is when the price moves below the 50-day moving average, rallies back to it, and then fails. That is one of my favorite shorting patterns ever. And watching this chart, we call that a blue ice failure, by the way, and that is certainly possible in this chart. Um, I know a lot of folks don't want to see that, and they don't want that to happen, and I get it. I really get it. But we have to take a look at a chart for what it is, not for what we want it to be. So watch that carefully. This is our most bearish chart right now in the indexes. Let's take a look at the SPY. SP, SPY did a good job yesterday and we held on, um, I'm sorry for all these lines on here, but I, I had already drawn this up. We held on to this bullish trend, as you can see here in the SPY. Now we kind of, pushed right down to it, we're clinging to it um, in that chart. So watch that closely, but as you can see, we're holding onto that trend. And we also have a little bearish problem here in that we broke this little level of price support and yesterday's rally didn't quite take care of that. We didn't come back up through that level. So we still have a little bit of worry and concern here. Now, if I draw a trend line, just kind of right down through this price level right here, you can see that we still have a big level right here that we need to completely break through. And today we have data that could certainly do that, or we have data that could reverse us right here. So one of the things we want to watch for is right here in this resistance area, will we be able to hold? Will we be able to hang on to this trend? And if we were to fail right here in this area, how technically damaging that could be to the chart. So we need to see those bulls find that inspiration this morning to push on through that level. Certainly possible this morning with the data coming our way. Let's take a look at the QQQ. Now the QQQ also did a good job yesterday of holding on to this trend. Now I have to tell you, I don't think this is um, a fantastic trend line because we don't have a whole lot of touches to, to that trend. However, we are holding it here and it did prove to hang right in there off of that price support. 
So a nice bullish move yesterday, a little bit of a relief rally. And so now the critical point here in the market is, will we find the bullish energy to kind of push back up through that little bit of price resistance right in there? Or will the data this morning provide us uh, that bearish look that we could easily break that support and trend. Now keep in mind if we were to break that support we do have additional levels of price support right in there that could hold us in the NASDAQ so watch that closely. Then let's take a look at our IWM. Now IWM continues in my opinion to remain bearish even though we did bounce back up above our 200 day or 50 day moving average yesterday we still have this major downtrend we have tons and tons of price resistance in this chart and although we did rally back up notice that we still have some resistance here in this chart that we need to defeat didn't quite get that done yesterday overall. So there is some problems here, some technical damage here in the IWM. And although we went back above our 50 day moving average, well, it really is going to be dependent on this data today. Will we get a bullish look at the market and push us through there? Or will we slip? And I think if we slip, guys, I think there's a high probability if we do get some bad data, that we could sink to that 200 and maybe even below that 200 as early as today. So watch that carefully. Notice our 50 continues to decline, our 200 continues to rise, and somewhere out here we could easily run into that death cross with the 50 crossing down through that 200. So the weight here in IWM, the technical picture here in IWM is not so good, even though we did catch that bullish rally yesterday. Let's take a look at um, our VIX. Now, interestingly enough, our VIX pushed back nicely yesterday, um, but it didn't push back as much as we would really like to have seen it push back, um, keeping us in that situation where we could hold around that 50 day moving average. Notice our shorter term moving averages have crossed up through that 50 day and we're starting to create that little bit of price support in this chart right in here. Now we don't wanna see that occur because if we were to bounce at a higher low here in this chart, it could become kind of painful in the selling if that were to occur. And let's also keep in mind, I'm gonna to go to a chart with nothing on it here, but price. Um, we have this major downtrend in this chart and we're getting closer and closer and closer to that uh, downtrend and a possible test up here if we were to bounce up is there. Now we need to see those, um, those bulls come in and really give us some confidence by pushing this right back down below that 50. And it would be even more comfortable if they press us back down below that little uptrend. Um, Maybe a tall order for today, but watch that closely um, here in uh, the chart today. Um, I expect quite a little bit of volatility at the open, and we'll we'll take a look at that here in just a second. Let's take a look at our T2122, which is the four-week new high, new low ratio. Notice yesterday we had a really substantial move up. It was, it was not as broad-based as I would like to have seen it, but we did have a nice little rally yesterday in several areas of the market pushing us up and you can see we cross back over that median area that 50 percent area here in that chart so remember t2122 doesn't give us any idea of the direction of the market it just tells us where those pressure points are so we did bounce i talked yesterday about that possibility of us bouncing up out of this area. I kind of expected this to push down a little bit more in the morning, but that didn't happen. So we did bounce up here. We got that relief rally that I talked about yesterday as a possibility. And now the question is going to be with the data coming our way, will we find that inspiration to move on up toward this area or will we re reverse and come back down? And I gotta tell you, I think the odds the odds on data right now kind of favor the downside, but I could be wrong because the market has chosen to ignore a lot of da bad data here lately, and that certainly could be the case today. So let's take a look at our T21 
2107. Now, T2107, got too many numbers in there. Um, T2107 um, did have a comeback yesterday. Nice little push back up. Notice we have 45% of our stocks above their 200-day moving average. Now, that's still a long ways away from being bullish. Um, and still showing quite a little bit of downside pressure in the market. Our trend continues down, but it is nice to see that we did catch a little bit of a bounce. Um, I'm not sure that that is going to help us a whole lot here just yet. We need to see a significantly uh, stronger bounce in um, those stocks coming up off that 200 day. So what this means is we have a lot of stocks yesterday that did bounce but they're bouncing right into downtrends or bouncing right up into resistance levels and charts. So be really, really careful here. And our T2101 was not all that impressive yesterday in um, showing us market breadth. We did have that nice rally back, but our market breadth was not all that impressive here. Didn't really give us a major push on that buy wave so just keep a close eye on that let's take a look at our economic calendar for today now this is where we're going to spend just a little bit of time our economic calendar shows us some problems today some issues that we're going to have to really pay attention to first off right here at the open we're going to get jobless claims and right now consensus is expecting jobless claims to increase just slightly for this week so you're going to want to keep a close eye on that and we've got the Philly Fed manufacturing. The Philly Fed is expected to um, be just slightly negative um, over the last reading. And then we have retail sales. Now, retail sales this morning, according to the Econo Day calendar, this is the Econo Day calendar. According to the Econo Day calendar, they are expecting a negative 0.8. Now, a negative 0.8 would normally be an ugly move, but you can see that would be an improvement over the prior, which was a negative 1.1. The question we have to ask ourselves this morning, the question the market's gonna be reacting to, is if this number comes in at ex expectation or even better, then the market could react bullishly to that move. And I would suspect that they probably would react bullishly to that move, continuing this little uh, bounce rally that we started yesterday. However, if this number were to miss, and just keep in mind how badly China missed their number just a couple of days ago, if we were to miss on this number and it comes in um, worse than expected, and there would be reason to maybe think that's possible with um, the unemployment um, benefits dropping off, the, the bonuses dropping off, the... the um, uh, the cliff that we have run into of um, um, evictions and things going on because of the Supreme Court decision on that. There's a lot of reasons. Um, rising inflationary prices creating pressures on um, those consumers not being able to do that discretionary spending because all their additional money is going into energy and food. Um, so there is reasons to be a little bit concerned about this number, whether it translates into this number or if it comes in a, a, to a, a number next month or something like that, I can't say, but watch that closely. And I think there's quite a little bit of nervousness this morning about what this number might say and how that may impact the market overall. So keep a close eye on that. And then um, later on, we've got business inventories, natural gas, Treasury International, and the Fed balance sheet. And we know we don't care about this. As long as the Fed keeps printing, we're happy. Um, how much debt they have doesn't seem to be a major concern to anyone. But watch these reports here before the open. They can certainly set the tone for the day and could easily create some, some big moves. So for example, um, if these numbers come in in a bullish way, there's a lot of the market right now that is holding short positions. And I would suspect a possibility of a short squeeze rally. And that's where you can get that really explosive upside move as those that are holding short get squeezed out and are forced to buy to cover. On the other hand, 
should we fail? Should these numbers not be good and the bears find a reason to attack? We have a very good chance of creating some substantial technical damage in the chart and likely really shaking the confidence um, of investors. So watch for that possibility. And I think there is that possibility if these numbers are bad, there could be a substantial sell-off um, that would ensue here. So um, watch that carefully. Could be a rough day here. Um, depending on how these numbers come out. And I would expect considerable volatility around these numbers um, this morning. If they come, if they beat, we're in good shape. If they come in badly, mm, could get rough. Let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar. Now our earnings calendar today, I'm not even gonna spend any time on this really. We have uh, 16 companies on the calendar. We only have one company um, of those 16 that's verified and uh, I put it in the in the report and it's this company, F-A-N-D-Y, first and um, notice there's almost no trading that occurs in this. <laughs> Certainly not notable here um, as a chart. So um, nothing in the earnings calendar that would provide us some inspiration today. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. It's all gonna be focused on this economic data. Um, we also have an issue that's brewing, guys, and, and we're not getting a whole lot of coverage of this, but I do think it's substantial, and I do think everyone should be paying attention to this. You've probably heard about China's um, 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 Evergrande. Um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that properly, but um, it is a, uh, a potential Bear Stearns Lehman style um, default on the way in China. As a matter of fact, Evergrande notified their banks that they will likely default on their payment on the 20th. And there was speculation that China themselves would, would bail them out. Now, why this is so big, it is a massive, massive uh, debt of over $300 billion. And um, as we know, banks all around the world probably have uh, portions of that debt. If they start, if they're forced to sell, they're a property holding company. If they're forced to sell to raise money, that puts more pressure on that declining housing prices over there in China and creates some major issues there. So this could trickle around the world um, here a little bit. And there's not a whole lot uh, we're not seeing much about that in some of the mainstream financial news. They little teeny tiny bits here and there, but this could be substantial. So kind of keep an eye on that. If if you start to see reports about um, things going on in China and that liquidity crisis that seems to be deepening over there, um, watch watch closely because that can have ripple effects here in our market as well. Let's take a quick look at um, uh, some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if this is the first time that you have seen these videos, if you could please do me a favor. If you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. I hope you understand, guys, that I'm, I'm different than everyone else out there that you might see in the market. That, that or might see on on um, social media that is all about the hype and the prediction and all those kind of things there's none of that here i don't try to hype i don't try to make predictions as to which way the market's going to go i do look at the technicals of the charts and um, that has served me well as a full-time trader for um, 16 plus years now and um supporting my family by trading. So if you find these things to be helpful, if you could do me also that favor of clicking that thumbs up button, leaving a brief comment, it helps the algorithms to show these videos to more folks. And if you could please, if you um, could share this link out on your social media feeds, 
that helps the channel to continue to grow. And I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who does do that. And also, those folks that are supporting the channel through the Buy Me a Coffee link just below the title of the video, I want to say thank you so much to everyone who does that. You guys are awesome. You humble me every day. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Let's take a really quick look at some potential socks, but I gotta tell you guys, I'm gonna suggest another day of being really careful and cautious here on your trading because there is some danger in this market and um, it could come as early as this morning. So watch that close. Now, first off, I wanna mention um, energy. Take a look at energy. Energy got some nice a nice boost yesterday, with that oil um, status number coming in showing a decline in supply. So take a look at this. We have this inverted head and shoulders pattern this, that has developed here on um, XLE. Notice we broke that neckline yesterday. So if we can continue to maintain this support in here, I would wait for that next entry where this gets this little rest or pullback in here, finds that level of support. Look for that next entry. Energy could be one of those things you might want to be paying attention to. Looking pretty good here overall. And you could start looking at stocks like, you know, uh, Devon Energy, Devon pushing up nicely here. We're seeing um, stocks like Exxon Mobil trying to break these downtrends and hold some higher lows. And this is um, one of those patterns that I look for where we break downtrends, hold that higher low, and then I'm looking for some upside moves in those charts. So energy is one of those areas. You might also wanna take a look at um, stocks in, um, whoops, can't get the symbol right. Um, in that food sector, um, whoops, ADM. That's where I wanted to go, ADM. Take a look at ADM, Archer Daniels Midland. Yesterday, um, Rightway Options, uh, we picked up a position here on ADM and it moves so strongly that, and with uh, retail sales numbers and stuff this morning, I just chose to take the profits on this trade yesterday. So it was just kind of a, a really nice base hit trade yesterday, knocking this out. But I gotta tell you, some of these farm products, consumer defensive stocks were perking up nicely yesterday. So kind of keep an eye on a few of these. Um, Archer Daniels approaching this resistance level. Looks like it's trying to follow through a little bit this morning here. But what I'd watch is for that next entry into this trade. Let's get past some of this data and then see if we can follow some of these uh, this trend possibly this trend in that chart. It may need a little bit more rest, so watch that carefully. But Archer Daniels looking pretty good. Other places in that con kind of conservative space, take a look at Procter & Gamble. P&G has been pulling back here just a little bit, but that consumer defensive space here holding up pretty well here in that chart. Watch for this level right in here. If we can hold, look for those bulls to maybe push on through. Another one might be Philip Morris. Philip Morris had a nice bounce yesterday right off of price support and trend. So keep an eye here on Philip Morris, a good dividend payer, um, one of those safety plays in the market. So watch that carefully. If that can hold in here, maybe a little bit of rest out here and then pick up that opportunity in that trade. So there's a few ideas for you today, but I'm really going to suggest you be very, very careful, at least initially this morning, until we get past that morning open. And I got to say, guys, just really quickly, the last few days we've had the futures gapping in, in, in a direction and then sh just within minutes of the open, a complete reversal um, occurring. Don't rule out that possibility again today. Institutions, if if that continues to work for them, if they can, can continue to gap the market in one direction and then sell to someone that jumps in and buys at the moment, they'll continue to do that as long as that continues to work. So be really careful. So what that means is this morning, like I wrote in the blog, hold, just take a breath after that, as soon as that market opens, no matter what the reaction in the futures uh, might be, take a breath, watch that price action carefully, make sure it's moving in that direction because as wild as the market has been, even if we get that confirmation that we're going to follow through after the market gap or if we're gonna reverse after that market gap, 
we have seen big whipsaws in this market intraday. So be very, very careful. Plan your risk carefully and just don't rush into this market. It's a dangerous place right now. Be very, very careful. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all the best of success. I want to wish you great results in your trading. And thank you so much, guys for all your kind support to the channel. I really appreciate it. I wish you all the very best and we'll see you right back here bright and early Friday morning for that um, next little um, report that could stub our toe and that's consumer sentiment. So watch carefully for that tomorrow. Everyone take care, have an awesome day and we'll see you back here bright and early Friday morning.